Hi, so today I'm doing a reading on Lane Staley of Allison Chains. Um, he passed in, yeah, he passed in 2002, April 5th. Um, he was a Leo, and he was born August 22nd. He's kind of on the cusp between Leo and Virgo, but I feel like Lane, well, I think he had quite a bit of Leo going on there. Um, he had early onset old age uh, from excessive use of prescription and street drugs um, when he passed. He was born in Kirkland, Washington in 1967. Uh, again, his birth date is August 22nd. And I'm just going to reach out, I'm just reaching out and asking him what he wishes to share, whatever that may be. And I ask for assistance to read accurately and clearly on what Lane Staley wishes to share. I will be including links um, to his birth chart and a wiki link, so if you don't know who he is and you're curious, you can read up. Okay. Let me just... All right, so let's see what um, Lane wants to share and what cards we get. All right, he's talking about... A disconnect where your emotions, your feelings, especially because this is the Four of Cups, um, he's talking about a feeling where you've just got this flat affect. To me, that is depression. Um, it's also boredom and lethargy. I'm feeling lethargic. He's got me feeling a sort of lethargy with this. Okay. And he's talking about getting the challenge to feel better, the challenge to um, get well. And I think he's referring definitely to trying to manage addiction and trying to get a better direction going with your life. And to me, he's, he's giving me the, the, the feeling that he just didn't have the energy. He wanted to, to pursue that. This is what's crossing him. But I don't think health-wise he was up for it. That makes sense, given what he had. Sorry about the glare. Okay. I think he's also referring to... Again, I'm sorry about my nail polish. I just looked at it. I was like, oh my god, that looks terrible. I'm <laughs> sorry. But here he's referring to, I feel like, transitioning also. From a state of where he didn't feel well and didn't feel connected and then I think passing and I think especially is being mentioned the challenge to feel better when dealing with depression and anxiety and a flat emotive feeling of no feeling except for to feel awful and him just wanting to, to get away from that feeling. This, there's like, he just couldn't stand to wake up. And I get it because I've, I've had, you know, clinical depression before where you struggle to just be in the present. You just, it's so weird. It's, you have no energy. Um, it's, it's a horrible feeling. 
and you just think, oh my God, I've got to wake up tomorrow and feel this again. It just feels, I totally understand why people, unfortunately, end up taking their own lives sometimes. Um, but he's bringing up wanting to feel better, wanting to get away, get away from uh, this emptiness that he felt inside himself. There was an emptiness. And let's see what else he wants to share. Yeah, this is feeling some, this is about some sort of restriction he was trying to put on himself, but also where he felt like he wasn't able to I think, uh, have a greater uh, show of will. Um, this is where he's dealing with, with some of his own limitations. It was just a struggle for him. But especially once the illness was starting to, I think, create that early onset of old age, which I didn't know um, until here recently about him. I, I thought that he died of a, um, you know, the, of course, the declining health of, of an addict, but I didn't know that it had gone, gotten so bad that it was like early onset of old age syndrome. Uh, so, this is the addiction. He is wanting to talk about addiction and negative coping mechanisms that are unhealthy, that take control of you, and empty your life of anything happy, of anything creative, of anything loving, of anything good. That's what I'm just, I'm just letting him give me impressions and I'm just going with it. He's talking about his struggle to deal with this mental health issue and it becoming a physical problem as well. I mean, I consider the by, you know, the imbalance biologically in, in the brain whether it's been from use of street drugs and prescription uh, abuse or whatever, it's, there's an imbalance going on. This one's an, the, the oppressive, that it takes control of everything in your life. Not just one little portion, it takes control of everything. It swallows everything, he's saying. He really doesn't want, I can feel it, people to emulate what he did or what other uh, artists do where there's destruction. Um, I think there's a real concern that there was somewhat of a glamorization that went on. Uh, I know because I remember it. Uh, I was, I'm closer to Lane's age, I was, I'm just a year younger than him, but um, there was a glamorization, for those of you that may not be aware of it, in the, in the 90s, of heroin chic, is what they called it, and uh, I remember seeing it, and, and I was, I, at that time especially, uh, was naturally slender, I, and I'm slender again now, but... Um, but back then, especially, of course, and I was in like 18, 19, 20s, uh, there was this look that people were drawn to, late 80s, early 90s, and it was this heroin chic look. And I always thought, my God, I think I look terrible this slender. I don't know why anyone would want to look sickly and think that that is neat. I, I remember it. And I feel like he's holding up this thing again. Probably because from what I understand, 
heroin is again uh, coming, you know, back. It, I think, kind of died down a bit uh, after the 2000s, early 2000s, and it seems like it's kind of re-emerged again. Um, and now we know it's being cut with fentanyl. It's even more deadly. Yeah, he's talking about instability and extremes, going to extremes and a lack of stability, trying to keep stability. Up and down. I'm getting from him that his, yeah, he's saying that his use created the imbalance that was, that held him back from physically being able to pursue and continue his career or to get better. He just was really ill. He's telling me uh, here, I just heard him say, it took possession of me. The addiction took possession of me. It takes possession of every person. And they are nothing but a shell. He really wants to make it clear that this was such a negative in his life and that it wasn't, um, he doesn't want people to glamorize his depression or his use of drugs or the lack of help that he sought at the end. He was simply too ill and I I think he didn't make it easy for people to help him. He's definitely giving me that. He shut them out and isolated them out of shame. I get out of shame. Deep shame. Embarrassment. Yeah, he's, he's talking about what is needed to heal. There was and is, I feel like he's talking about these uh, rehab program, programs that are thousands of dollars, and not just thousands of dollars, we're talking about like 30000 and up. Um, these places, there's, there needs to be a change with them as well. But he's bringing in healing, and he's bringing in long-term healing. And I feel like he's talking about the healing with regard to addiction. I think he could be also um, bringing up his death, his illness, for sure. Wanting to bring clarity about how limiting, how addiction limits you. It doesn't free you. It creates more complication and steals everything from you. The world. In the environment, he had the world. He literally could have had a lot more success, he's saying, if he hadn't gotten involved in, in the use of these drugs. It ended his career. It ended his life. It ended his relationships. One of the relationships that um, meant a lot to him uh, wasn't, wasn't, he wasn't with uh, at the time. She had died in 1996 and she was someone that he had wanted to marry at one time and they struggled with their relationship before she passed in 1996 of a heroin overdose and her name was Demry Parrott. Um, I feel like he's indicating here though that he's saying he had the world, he had so much opportunity and for success that he couldn't use, that he couldn't, didn't have the energy for or the clarity of thought for, um, because the addiction stole his success from him, stole his creativity from him. He 
he really wants to to make an impact in reaching out i believe this way maybe to the world in a way to say stay away from drugs there's nothing glamorous about them um it's not cool to have your creativity stolen from you and to sit embarrassed a pile of of bones on your sofa oh you know i i really feel like he's very animated about this and i say that because i'm getting the cards i'm getting i've done other uh, readings on him off camera um i would have had this reading done earlier this week but this past week but i lost my full day's work with family interruptions one day so um unfortunately lane's reading was really choppy and i thought i'll i'll just redo it but i got the same kind of cards where he was really adamant talking about um addiction and i thought well this will be interesting to see if he wants to talk to about it again and sure enough he does hopes and fears he's he's saying that there's new starts this is like you can do and achieve more this is the hope for um being able to create and create new projects and the fear of not being able to do so and that's what he brings up here it was his fear and he wasn't able to complete it he wasn't able to enjoy his success to really have a feeling of success uh uh he did not feel successful despite having that opportunity in his environment he couldn't make use of it cuz heroin drugs suck this is recognition um this is recognition he he knows that he's um recognized and uh, he's grateful for that but i think he's also it's a bit better sweet because he doesn't feel like he could quite utilize um his success the way he wanted to creatively i think he wants people to also recognize the truth about how he passed um that he's not proud of it uh, that it wasn't something you know that he wanted or thought was a obviously a good thing and that it held him back it really held him back king of swords let's see what we have also with the six of wands there and the fool it's a big gamble he's indicating he knew the risks too um he wasn't stupid we sh you know he's shown to be a uh, quick witted he had foresight he knew it wasn't good but yet i think he was couldn't uh apparently stay away from the temptation um it's a big gamble and he wants people to realize that it's in its it's where the odds are stacked against you you are not going to you don't realize what you're risking and at the time it seems like it feels good like it's uh literally a trip you know um he's urging education he's wanting people to improve their skills and encouraging that and especially i'm getting like if you've got the skill with singing and you like my music you know make sure that you are able to continue to do that by staying away from bad habits that take control of you and this is ex exercising greater skills um and balance this is the decision making the decision that you value your skills and your creativity more than you do getting indult you know allowing drugs to take and ruin what you have i definitely see that so his encouragement is that people make decisions that support their creative 
skills and accomplishment so that it's not kind of lopsided. I'm getting the word lopsided with um, his sense of it. It's kind of lopsided. Yes, he, he became successful, but again, he didn't feel like he could completely utilize the success he had in his environment. Yeah, okay, he's talking about shame, anxiety, depression, the mental baggage. It created more mental baggage than he already had. Ugh. It was really hell waking up in the morning and being him and dealing with the mental gymnastics I'm getting that he had to go through with himself being in his own skin. Mm. Wow. And he had a very, he's indicating that there was a very delicate balance and he paid dearly. Okay, let's see what else we get. I'm going to ship these over. And pull a few more and see if there's something else he wants to share. <clears throat> this is the public and it can represent public venues, public places. Oh, I'm getting it right away. He's like saying, I really appreciate my fans, um, the support throughout the years of, of the public. Really appreciative. That really touches his heart. I'm getting also that, like, letting fans know that appreciate him still, that means a lot. That touches truly, truly a very tender, sweet, you know, his heart. It means a lot. And I, I'm also getting it. He wants me to, to let people know that have, you know, maybe they've got a poster of him up or something like that. Um, it really does touch his heart. And he is aware of the fans that write him songs or poetry, this kind of thing. He's, he's wanting me to mention that. And fans may not share this with other people. It might just be something they've done privately, but he wants them to know that, again, that kind of thing, um, touches him very, very deeply, and he does indeed see it, and he does indeed appreciate it. Like, oh, you know, he feels really the clumped. <laughs> this is indicating quickness or a response that's fast. And this is something where, okay, he's really wanting to speak to the fact of, again, deceit or something not being as it appears to be. And I think that he might, might be indicating the lifestyle that people might think, well, why did you had everything? Why did you do that? You know, you chose the drugs. Um, it's not as simple as that. There's a lot more going on than you're aware of in people's lives that has happened prior to this and, and why people do what they do. I feel like he's wanting to make that really, really clear. I think there's also a lot of um, wanting to caution um, people in what they read, uh, again, about things are not accurate. Bear, why are you meowing? She just had her lunch. Was that good? Meow. You having a bath now? She is. <laughs> Ten of Cups, the Ace of Cups, the Hanged One. He wants people to get a different perspective and to think about what it's like to be an, an addict.
there was a lot of heartache. Getting from him that people may have misunderstood um, some of his actions of like isolating people. It wasn't that he didn't um, love people anymore and why he was pushing them away. It's because of his shame. A great sense of shame is what he was trying to hide. And his own illness he was trying to hide. They need to understand his illness from a different perspective. He gives a lot of love. A lot of love here. And again, connected to fans, connected to his public, his mother. I feel like this is very motherly to me when I look around this. Mother, baby, that's, she's her baby. His mother, I feel like definitely, and he's appreciative of his mother um, reaching out to his fans, his fan base here. There's nice, a really positive, beautiful love, unconditional pocket of, of love there that radiates. Okay. A queen of wands. Taking action. Here's taking action as well with the Ace of Wands. Hmm. This feels like there's some new development here. It could be his mother's involved in a creative project with another lady. Maybe one of his sisters or something. I think he has sisters or a sister. I know that he comes from a, a larger family. But I feel like that's his mom. Because I know that she has dealt with some reached out to his fans now and again. Um, I think there is some really heartfelt, and it could be for benefit, you know, of people with addiction problems, um, musicians, art, this kind of thing. There's the creative energy. It's an initiation that she's getting involved in. It's the beginning of something that can be built upon that will have more development coming to it. The lovers. Choices, looking at choices. When we look down this way, we see the Knight of Swords, <laughs> the hanged man or the hanged one, and the lovers. He's wanting to caution people before they run out there and on, I think, impulse try things, especially drugs. They are not what they th seem like they're going to be. He's saying, have a different perspective, take a different look, see it from another angle, and make a better choice. You're called to make a better choice. Okay? Hmm. Very interesting. I feel like there's marriage in this picture here. There's a Queen of Wands, an Ace of Wands, the lovers, and the emperor. Uh, I think getting married, uh, a husband, an engagement here, or a new addition to the family. He might be acknowledging that they've got a new member coming into their family. I definitely feel that's interesting. And someone's going to be a father. One of his brothers. Again. Or there's some agreement 
in this project that they're doing that is made and I feel like it's going to be very successful this could even be like a, a I I feel like there is some this could even be his father Lane's father I know he has a stepfather but um, something about a father husband figure here also can be an older man like that's a producer or whatever but I feel that there's some sort of an agreement or partnership may have been delayed at one point um, now when we look down this row we're getting something about with regards to a father figure maybe Elaine's father I don't know there may be something that's not been represented accurately and there's some heartbreak around this or there's sorrow where a male husband father figure is concerned we look this way and then when I look this way I feel like that I just feel like there is something new coming in connection possibly with maybe his mom and a sister a brother I don't know if they've got some family member coming in uh, you know it, or if this is this kind of birth is in a sense of a, 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 a beginning project um, involvement but I see people working together and there's like just this sense of bond hmm. eight of cups it made him very sad that he ended up I think dying prematurely um, and he's talking about the neglect of his body and that he had to walk away from what he had worked hard to get to and then he couldn't like I said he really wants people to understand that that how hard he worked and then he blew it um, and this is his words not just mine I'm, I'm I wouldn't say that but I'm getting from him certain phrases and so there's some remorse he has remorse for that yeah his mother I see doing something for those that have lost their lives or have lost in their lives maybe parents that have lost children uh, through uh, addiction issues here something along these lines like a benefit for the public and families I feel like there could be a woman that I don't know if she leaves it and then the mother takes over or something but I don't know there's something going on here but this is talking about I think also trying to help people that feel like they're in a hard spot whether it's the families of addicts or addicts themselves there's something about that oops and this is the bully card and this is the the few sense of futility card I think he's saying it changes you also and and your personality To where you can become mean or seemingly mean again there's a sense of I messed that up and it just became more than he could do anything about He's bringing up work with the Knight of Pentacles. He would have liked to have been able to really uh, 
apply himself as he wanted to. That's for sure. But uh, that didn't happen. The addiction took care of that. Gave him poor health and stole that right out from underneath him. Okay. So his message to people is stay the heck if you if you haven't tried it don't. And don't let anyone encourage you or anything like that. He's he's saying you admire me and you respect me and you want to make me happy. Stay away from drugs. Get yourself involved in honing your skills as a musician or a singer. Do things that are positive and healthy. There's nothing glamorous uh, about not being here and having gotten that success and working so hard and then not being able to appreciate it. Okay, and I, I definitely feel like he's also acknowledging the tremendous hurt that his addiction caused not only his fans, but his family and friends and his band. That's definitely in there. I can really feel him like... Okay, Lane, anything else you want to sh say really quickly? I'll just give a, a four-card poll for the end. What would you like to say with regard to how you are? People want to know how you are. But I also did say anything else you want to say. Let me just shuffle these cards really well. Any la uh, last response that you want to share? The Ten of Cups. I feel like he's saying, I'm with family, I'm with my ancestors. Um, I'm in a good place. It's beautiful. With that Ten of Cups, I got a very, uh, what's that? Um, kind of a Venus uh, type of a sense of aesthetic, if you know what I mean. Um, it very beautiful landscape or realm. He does a lot. I'm seeing him sitting uh, in a window, kind of more in a remote cabin like out looking over water and um, I'm just getting this but I'm just seeing that there's this brilliant yellow golden light that's hitting the window and, and kind of lighting up the profile of his face it's really beautiful so yeah he's like he's like and this is kind of like it's kind of like if he took a selfie you know and it's from the spirit world and sent it to my brain this is what it looks like you know it's what I saw just now yeah look remote <laughs> Thank you, Lane. Um, he's in the hermit. He's enjoying himself. Look, he's like, he says he's like Grizzly Adams now. Oh, that's funny. And I just saw him with like a beard and he's heavier and um, stronger. You know, he's got, he's, he's filled out. You know, he's not got an ill body. And he's very content. And I do think that he is with Demery and they're having that family on the other side. Because that's what she wanted to do. They had both wanted that, but the addiction stole that dream from him too. So I feel like he's got what he didn't, wasn't able to appreciate and not that he couldn't appreciate it, but he just, with the addiction, it got in the way. And there, it's not in the way. 
He's very content. And I get he lives in a remote, he prefers a remote type of a landscape environment. And I wasn't going to say the Grizzly Adams thing, but he made me, by the way. I, it's because I didn't think, I thought, oh, come on, that's just me being silly. It's like, no, it's not. Um, Prince of Swords and the High Priestess. There's something with intuition. Okay. There's little things he does. And there's messages. Okay. He sends telepathy. What's this about? What's the message, dude? What are you letting me know? Um, that he's very active with this means of communication now. He's, you know, been deceased since... Um, and it's, I'm bothered to say that word because I really feel that they're more alive, we are more alive in these other realms after we drop this mortal coil. Um, I really do. So it bothers me to say, he's deceased. It just seems so, like I'm just saying the wrong word entirely. So I have got to come up with another word. But he is thriving on the other side. Thriving. Um, he's working with skills of intuition. It's what we can't see, but that exists in his realm. You can see it. It's, you know, we can't see it here. Okay, there was something he was conveying this way. It's very interesting. I really enjoy talking to him. Thank you, Lane. This is interesting. What else you want to share? He's telling me to go ahead and put two more rows of cards down and he'll be finished. Okay. This is the public. And he's him away from it. I get it. That's exactly what I want to do. And he knows it. So he's smiling at me now, I sense. Okay. He's saying, be patient. Be patient. And the hard work that you put into other things, if you keep at it, will, will uh, bear fruit. But you have to be patient. Building creating. I have a feeling he might be encouraging me because um, earlier this morning I'm sitting on the bed here with Benny and we're looking at our <laughs> devices of course and just the roar of the traffic through our um, skylights just made me think I, we've got I just I'm like oh my god it sounds like we got these motorcycle gangs coming through seriously and it's like really loud and I was just thinking, we gotta get out of here. It's too noisy. It's we can't even hear our own living room. I think he's. This is a, maybe a little personal message of be patient. Things will work out. But this is also a message he. Oh, this is like Biden. Wow, what? Wait a minute. I feel like he wants to reach out to the public and also say, you know, the efforts that are being worked on right now are going to bear fruit. And I feel like he's trying to give a little message with regard to, I think it's po possibly, you know, Biden being able to get things on a better combination, working something out. And especially where the public's concerned I think with what like Republicans are doing and stuff or something but these are public <coughs> concerns and he's talking about being patient and things will are going to be worked out <coughs> and there's things that we don't know about maybe with regard to what he's indicating this king of cups who I'm going to liken to Biden because I can't think of I feel like he's wanting to speak to the greater issues going on in the world. And he does look at it. He's, that's what he's telling me here. He's, he's remote, but he's also remote and watching. You know, he, he's not just rem remote and ignoring, but he's remote and watching. 
from where he's at. And this is the beginning of something new taking place and taking hold, being born in the world. There is some wisdom, something he's indicating here that comes to the public, something for the public. It's like a gift of wisdom that comes through spirit. Hmm, that's interesting. But it's for everyone. Okay. And I definitely think this is something towards fans. Something manifested here. Okay, let's see. The lovers. That falls under the Seven of Pentacles. Again, that could be um, people joined in a collaboration. It can be it can be a relationship, partnership, definitely of some kind, and success, overcoming obstacles. He's urging us to 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 be patient, that we're going to overcome these obstacles. That's really nice of him to share that. Look, justice. He's saying that the law, the greater law, is going to prevail. And I feel like he's, he has a, he's telling me, I feel like here, he's got a keen interest in what's going on in the world. And a keen interest, I think, in actually politics and our, our nation. I feel like there's going to be, he's indicating there's going to be more work that can be done, perhaps bipartisan here, in the future, to overcome obstacles, and there's a legal precedent. I think he's talking about a lot of these things going to the Supreme Court that um, the Republicans and stuff are doing. So he's wanting to share some advice, it looks like, too and saying for the, the people, his fans and others, uh, you know, be patient. Working things out, finding combinations, uh, <clears throat> and being uh, aware of your feelings, being tuned into your feelings, not blocking your feelings off balancing your emotion. Definitely also making the decision, wants you to make the decision to honor your creative skills in life, no matter if it's, you know, what it is. But value that over any, any substance. We look here, we see the message of some kind of something working out and overcoming obstacles. You know, just paying attention. Being, he's saying being present in your life and enjoying what your life is. Finding something to enjoy in the bonds that you have with your family and loved ones. Do not take them for granted. And he's also saying about patience with each other. And remembering to treat each other, I'm getting like how you, back and forth again, treat others how you want to be treated. It's not hard. So I think that is what I'll end up with. I think that's a good reading. Um, if you enjoyed this reading on Lane Staley of Alice in Chains, um, that was really interesting, I thought anyway. Um, 
please give this a thumbs up and share it with like-minded people um, and encourage them to share it. All right. Thank you so much. Please hit the thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and that your notification bell is on. Thank you so much again.